What's up guys, Jaxel here with a tutorial for Scoreboard Assistant. Now, uh, this is a tutorial, f I'm, I'll be using Scoreboard Assistant to show it, but you could actually do this with any other program. So this is more of a tutorial on how to do animations in Open Broadcaster software. Now the original uh, design of my Xplit Panel Writer back when I first made it about three years ago was to be as efficient as possible to reduce the Im impact of your uh, CPU that uh, things like your uh, text and images on the screen would cause. And you know that was important three years ago because computers were a lot weaker. Now computers are a lot stronger. Scoreboard Assistant is still written with performance in mind and you can still get all the performance that uh, you had with the old Xplit Panel Writer. In fact even better because I, I wrote the program better at least I like to think so. Um, but I also wanted to give people the option to do some nice animations. And so with this next version, 1.06, uh, saving your uh, tabs will now output all the information in addition to their output files, which would be you know text files here, or images if you go in and select the image option. Uh, in addition to that, it will also output all the contents to some simple XML files. So I have an XML file here, which is made from this. And what happens is doing these XML files allows you to do some nice animations. So let's uh, do something here, and let's watch the screen. And as you can see, something moved right here and automatically updated. Now let's change that back, and you'll see it happen again. Now this is a lot more of a uh, performance hog than simple text files or images would be. So if you want to do something like this, uh, you have to be have a pretty powerful computer. In fact, the computer that I'm recording this on is not a powerful commu computer. So you're going to see the animation stutter a bit because this is my gaming computer, not my streaming computer. My gaming computer is a lot weaker. And from that, you probably want to know how I did this animation. And first of all, I'm, you're going to see I, I did it through CLR browser. In my previous tutorial, I showed how to do uh, some simple CLR browser animations. But this one is a bit more complicated. It's not just moving images in and out. In and out. Uh, first thing I want to start with is this bottom panel right here. That's the simpler one, so I'm going to go th over uh, this page file first. Now, if we bring up the CLR browser config, you can see it simply goes to an HTML file called event.html and the width 1280, height 40, 60 FPS. We open up event.html. You can see I have a script running here. And if we ignore the script for now, get rid of it, and just show the uh, the HTML, what you'll see is this is straight up HTML page. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just HTML and it's displaying the bottom panel. Now, that's in this and that's the divs down here at the bottom. The important thing with this is the script. Now I'm using a uh, a package called Minified, which you can get f at minifiedjs.com, and all I'm doing is when the page loads, you know what? Why do I have a set time out? Doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna get rid of that. <laughs> you know, I'll get rid of it later. All right. So all I'm gonna do is gonna do an XML request for the output file, which I showed you a moment ago. Output event.xml. It's going to take the contents of it and fill those contents into the divs and then animate moving the location of the div from negative 40 pixels to four zero pixels from the bottom of the frame. Very simple. And that's why when we load the page, you can see it slide up. Now, there's no looping here. This will only run once. So if I change the contents by clicking this, no animation is going to happen. The reason I have it this way is because this uh, two field event bottom bar 
will so rarely ever be updated, so I don't want auto polling going on because that's going to add some extra, you know, uh, computer resource requirements. So there's no uh, extra polling here. It's just going to uh, poll once when I load up my stream and then be done with it. If I want to repoll, I have to reload the page. So now it's going to say general gaming. Not very complicated at all. Um, but if we want to see something a bit more complicated, we're going to look at this one over here, the other panel, which is a second window, which goes to a different page called Versus 2. The reason why this one's more complicated is because this one I do want to pull. Every time I make a change, I'm going to want to see those that change on the screen. So if I click Save, I want to see that slide up and then change that to Grand Finals. If I change the name of a player, I want to see the names of the players update. If I change the scores, I want to see the scores update. Alright, that was supposed to animate. I probably. There it goes. You know, that was probably computer lag that made it not animate. As I said, this is my weak computer. Alright, so. If we look at that page, you're going to see it's a lot more complicated. And that was versus two. And let's uh, first go to the HTML. Just like before, it's a simple. HTML page. Uh, if you want to see it, I need to comment that out. Or not comment it out, just save it out. And just like before, it's an HTML page. Now what I'm doing is, the reason why I have top minus 40 and bottom minus 40 is I want both elements to start outside the boundary box of the viewable area so that it slides in which is why you see nothing right now. Simple HTML page so far. Now we go back to the JavaScript and you can see it's very different to how we had it before. Whoops, didn't mean to open that. There we go. How we had it before is we're just going to request once. Instead, what I have is the request once and then I set an interval so it automatically requests every one second and then it's going to run through that check update if updating it's not going to check reason why I have that is you don't want it uh, updating while an animation is currently running so that's just a tag tell saying an animation is currently running uh, don't run the update this second so now we have our uh, the same request. The request is going to store all the elements into variables. It's going to get the times. Now the uh, need for the time is also important because it's going to check every one second. And the timestamp tells it, oh, this uh, nothing was changed this second, so let's move on. And then what you're going to see is I have a bit more animations. If the match name is changed, run the animation on the match name. Now the match name animation, it actually updates the entire top bar. So we change the, uh, the match name. The entire top bar is going to slide up. And then a new top bar is going to slide down. So what it does is... It runs the animate, it slides up the top bar. Once that's done, it fills in the new match information, and then it slides the top bar back down. Uh, here we have player one or player two. If player one or player two are changed, it's going to slide only the players up, update their information, and then slide the players back down. So let's change that. You know what? Let's keep it that way and just click swap. And you're going to see the players are going to slide up and then they slide down. Scores, very similar. Same thing as players. And the game, which is on the bottom, is similar to the top. If the game changes, it's going to slide down the bottom bar, update it, and then slide it back up. Animations are not that hard to do. 
you just have to have some knowledge of JavaScript and HTML. I know I showed a lot of code to you guys right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this with the tutorial on obsproject.com, and you guys will be able to mess around with it. Now, these aren't the only two uh, panels I have. I also have something for this, and text is going to slide in here. And if I uh, change that text, it's going to slide out, and then slide back in. And then I also have caster information here. So let's say we had uh, Darth Arma, and his Twitter was at Darth Arma. Click Save. You're going to see that slide out, and then his new information slides in. Anyway, thanks for watching, and this will, this will be a lot easier to do once the next version of the Scoreboard Assistant comes out. Peace.